Hi, I'm Jesse Adler, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'll be showing you how to make a spindle sander powered by a drill. So first you're going to need a normal uh, corded uh, drill. Here's mine right here. I just received it. Uh, I bought it off eBay. It's quite used, but that doesn't matter because it will not be exposed. You also need um, either sanding drums that you buy, like I did, or you can make your own. Uh, let me take those, these out of here. Uh, it's quite a few different sizes, but they're all like this, and uh, you can kind of understand how they go into the drill, and they work. They're on a bag. I'll show you them up closer in a second. They also come with spares. So here you can see the four sizes. There's the smallest, and it's actually pretty small. And there's the largest, and I think it's a two, one and a half inch diameter. The smallest is a, a half inch diameter. And then there's also a three quarter inch and a one inch. And I bought these off eBay, and I'm not sure if they're still selling them, but if they are, like I said, I'll link them in the description. So let's get started making measurements for the box we'll build this out of. So I'm going to build the box that will house the drill for the sander out of this uh, sheet of, I believe, three eighths inch plywood. And uh, most plywood will do, uh, but yes, on the thicker side is better. Probably nothing below 3 8 uh, So let's get the measurements for it. Okay, so to find the measurements of the box, I'm going to first take measurements of the drill. And I want to make the box as small as it can be so it can be uh, super portable. So I'm only going to make it as big as I have to. So if you can imagine that the spindle uh, sander piece is in the center of the box, then then the um, the uh, how big the box has to be is the distance from this to the end of the drill twice, because I want this to be in the middle. So I'm going to use this ruler just as a placeholder um, down the center, and then I'm going to use this ruler to measure how far it is from there to the edge. And I'm going to say it's about 8 inches. So this box is going to be 16 inches uh, it, uh, each way. Actually, I changed my mind. I only want it to be 16 inches one way, because a 16-inch box both ways will be uh, pretty huge, so I'll probably make it 16 inches one way, and then maybe 5 or 6 inches the other way. So, uh, that's going to be the same for your drill. Just uh, do the same measurements for your drill. Next, for the height. Now this is literally just uh, anything over the height of the drill. So I'm going to go like that, and again I'm going to use this as a placeholder for the top. It looks like 10 and a half inches is uh, what it is. I'm probably going to go with 11 inches tall then. So now that we have our measurements, uh, I can uh, do the parts that I'm going to cut out. So I'm going to have a top piece, which kind of will look like this, and it's going to be uh, 16 inches long, and I'm gonna say, uh, this is a ruler, I'll do 6 inches wide. Done with that, and it's gonna have a hole in the middle. Now there's gonna be another piece that's for the bottom that doesn't have a hole, and that's gonna be the same 16 by, uh, 6. So, now we need to do the sides. And remember, we decided it was going to be 11 inches tall. So that's going to be 11 inches tall by 6 inches wide. So that's... I'm not drawing super well. That's 11 by 6. And that's going to be times 2. And then we also need ones for the other side, which are going to be the same 16 inches long and they're going to be 11 inches tall as well. And so two of those for each, so one for each side, so two of them, and then uh, 16 inches long and six inches tall. So overall we need one, two, three, four, five, six boards, because it's a box that has six sides. This one will have a hole in the top, this one won't, and then these each for the side. So let's get started cutting those out of the plywood. Also, you might not understand this now, but in order to access the drill, in order to turn it on and off, I'm going to be having one of these uh, big sides open up on hinges, and uh, that way I'll be able to change out 
the exact drum that I'm using by uh, using that keyed chuck that I have on the drill. And that means I'll be able to turn it on and off so I don't have to have an external switch, which would raise the price. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's cut that plywood. Okay, so first I need to mark out these measurements just like I did on this piece of cardboard, but on there. Let's do it. Okay, so now I've got all of these pieces cut, and uh, a few of the edges are a little bit rough. Like, as you can see, this one wasn't cut exactly on the line. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take them up to the belt sander, or sorry, the uh, disc sander that I built in a previous video. Check that out up there. And I'm going to uh, make the edge a little bit straighter. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll have noticed that that was actually a new camera angle. And I installed this little uh, GoPro mount here, and I 3D printed a uh, cell phone mount so that I get that nice angle right there. So uh, let me know in the comments if you prefer that, or if you like it just being on a tripod over here as I work. So uh, let me know what you like. So now I've kind of laid it out so you can kind of have an idea of how big it'll be. And uh, yeah. And uh, for reference, here's the drill. And uh, so that'll go up there, and it's about perfectly half the size. Uh, or length, I should say, and that will poke right up there with the sanding drums. So, uh, yeah, let's get this box together. To build it, I'm going to be using my uh, Senko air compressor, which you probably have seen in previous videos. And, uh, yeah, it's a one-gallon air compressor, goes up to 135 PSI, and it's been really useful, especially with this attachment for blowing the uh, sawdust off of my disc sander. But uh, also, I'm going uh, today I'm going to be using this nail gun with some pen nails, tiny, tiny little nails, and uh, that should hold them together uh, while the glue is drying. But first, how to attach the drill inside. I think I'm going to be using the same method as I used on the disc sander, where you can uh, see I used a uh, hose clamp there, and I'm going to hold it in with that. So I have this uh, big hose clamp. Where did I put it now? Here it is. I have this nice old big hose clamp that I'm probably going to use. So let's get that on first and then I'll uh, nail gun it together. Another reason that I'm going to be using the hose clamp is because it's going to be adjustable, which means if I need to move the drill up or down later, I can. But uh, here is the side piece. You can kind of see I have it here. I have the drill here and I have one of the sanding drums. So I'm going to put that in the drill's chuck. Let's just tighten that down on there. Let's say it's right there. So if the drill is right here, it's going to be too far out. So the drill has to come down a little bit. Drill's right there. It's still a little bit too far out. But remember, I can loosen the chuck, choke up on that. And that's about perfect. I'm going to bring it all the way down, probably, because I can always move it further out. So now let's see as far as uh, centering it in the sander. So I want there to be enough space so that the drill has some space to curl that around. But it looks like there still is. So I'm going to put this ruler here, and uh, it's 16 inches long, so 8 inches in the, is in the center. So I would like it to be right about there. That seems pretty good. So now I'm kind of going pretty fast. You'll see probably in a minute how this is all going to work. Now I want this hose clamp to be probably right around the center there. So I'm going to uh, get my pencil right here. I'm going to mark some of the outside of the drill uh, so that I know where I want it. Let's just mark it. Okay, this pencil's running out of ink. And then if I want the hose clamp right around the drill, I'm probably going to make a big hole there, and I'm going to make a big hole there. I know my head's kind of covering it, but there we go. Because if I want the, head, the hose clamp right around the middle, that's where I want the hole there, and that is where I want the hole there. So now I'm going to drill those holes, tighten the hose clamp down, and we'll get the box together.
Okay, so this is what I've come up with. It's been a little while since I recorded. And uh, so this is held on. The foam is just because the uh, loop is a little bit too big for the drill, so that fills in the space. But the drill could still move like this. So I made this little block over here so it couldn't move this way. And the bottom piece will make it so it can't move that way. And this is pretty uh, square with the top. So uh, yeah, let's now uh, get the sides on. Okay, so now I have, uh, that's one, two, three, four of the sides on out of the six. I'm just missing this side and this side. And uh, next I'm gonna do the top side because the other side um, has hinges and it's not actually gonna be glued on. But, uh, so the drill is in here, it's really tight in there. It's perfectly square, I think, or square enough. And uh, basically I have this point in space that I have to drill it in. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, cut a rectangle out of here, and then I'll have a different uh, one for each of my bits that I have, because they're all different sizes. And uh, yeah, let's do that. Uh, so now I have it cut, and it's a little bit coincidental because I would have used this sander that I'm building to sand out the inside because it can do the inside. Not because I need a curve, just because it can do the inside. But I think it's okay, so now I'm going to make the pieces that insert into here. Also, here's another quite important step. You need to put these little um, pieces of wood on because that's what's going to hold, it's upside down right now, but that's what's going to hold uh, the little inserts in. So you'll see in a second what I'm talking about completely. But yeah, make sure to put those in. So now, as you can see, uh, looking from the top, there's these nice little places that the wood can rest on. So now let's make those inserts. So I've got this leftover piece of plywood uh, from the cuttings that was not used, so I'm going to cut a few pieces out of this. I have to make four inserts. So now that I have the hole cut out, I'm going to utilize the fact that this is a drill and drill where the hole is uh, as I lower it down. But I'm going to do that off camera because it's going to be kind of hard to uh, videotape it. And now it is raining, so I can't work right now, and I'm in a, I'm having a bit of problem with the uh, way that I'm trying to solve the issue of having different sized drums now. So I think I'm going to call this the end of part one, and uh, part two will come out next week. So uh, bye, thank you for watching. If you've gotten this far, uh, thank you so much. Maybe consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, look out next week for the next video. So check out that video up there that video down there, and if you want to subscribe, go over there. Bye.